You've seen all the expensive network crap that we're using around here to break the one gigabit network transfer speed barrier that we've been stuck with for the last decade. Well, today is not about that. It's about hitting your network at home with a much needed shot of adrenaline on the cheap. The Scimitar RGB from Corsair features 17 programmable buttons, a 12,000 DPI optical sensor, and a shape design for comfort in MOBA and MMO games. Check out the link in the video description to learn more. Okay, so the first time I tried to do something like this was way back in the NCIX Tech Tip days with this video here. I had the right idea. Use a relatively inexpensive multi-port network card with multiple cables attached to it to achieve faster transfer speeds than what would be possible with a single port and a single cable. But the software implementation wasn't as mature yet, and the only scenario where I saw a real benefit was with multiple clients hitting a single server connected in that way all at once. Today, we're going to actually do what I theorized would be freaking awesome all those years ago and demonstrate a point-to-point -point transfer speed of more than one gigabit with about $100 worth of hardware off of eBay, assuming that you've already got a couple of decent Windows 10 PCs. So it starts with the hardware shopping. First, you'll need a couple of quad port network interface cards or NICs. I ended up with a couple of HP branded Intel Pro 1000 PT cards that I snagged for about $30 each. Next, you'll need a network switch that can actually handle all of those plugs. So the four port one built into your home router or even a standalone eight port desktop switch won't cut it if you wanna plug in anything else. The good news is that for this functionality, you don't need a fancy smart switch, so any cheap 16 or 24 port will do. We used a D-Link one that Johnny, the network guy who helped us with this project, had lying around. The last thing that you're going to need is 8 Ethernet cables, but if that comes as a surprise to you, you probably shouldn't be taking on any networking projects. So our initial testing actually didn't go very well. We threw the two cheapo quad network cards into my usual test bench and my upgraded personal rig, disabled Windows firewall, plugged in all the Ethernet cables without actually worrying about plugging into the main router for internet, and then we wanted to see what would happen. The answer was nothing. Um, they transferred at exactly gigabit speeds um, a disheartening result given that Johnny had assured me that he had gotten it to work on his test machines with no hassle whatsoever. So we put new, fresh Windows 10 installs on each and nada. Same thing. What the heck? Time to bring out the big guns. So Johnny ran home and got his custom Z170 ASRock board with an Intel Core i5 Skylake chip in it and a random Lenovo pre-built with a Core i3-4130 dual core. We put his NICs into those, a couple of Intel i3-40T4s that are a bit more expensive than the ones I bought, but still quite affordable and voila! Transfer speeds in excess of one gigabit. Not particularly impressive still, and frequently dipping below gigabit even, but the important thing that we're looking for here is activity on all four interfaces, and we got it. From there though, it was time to keep tuning. We wanted to eliminate the mechanical hard drive in the Lenovo machine as a bottleneck, so we threw a secondary SSD in there. Big improvement, but still not enough we needed to do more. So we tore apart Johnny's Lenovo machine and put in 16 gigs of RAM so we could make a RAM disk and still not the results we needed. I mean, this should have been capable of over 400 megabytes per second. So we started trying a lot of other random stuff. We wanted to boot the Lenovo hard drive off of my eight core machine. We tried installing fresh with Johnny's Windows 10 ISO to see if maybe that was the issue we were having when, before when I was trying to do it. And in either of those situations, the multi-channel transfers that we wanted didn't work at all all. Both of us were tearing our hair out at this point. Getting SMB multi-channel to work seems to be as much about luck as anything else, and certain combinations of hardware with certain Windows installs were working, while others weren't. So in the end, we did manage to get Johnny's boot SSD from his Skylake personal rig to run on my X99 test bench, but we were stuck with that Lenovo box with the Core i3. 
The good news is that making that change, and we actually switched back to my cheap network cards at this point because the 340s didn't seem to be making a difference anyway, resulted in a much faster and more consistent transfer, just still not what it should be capable of. And then we had the eureka moment. SMB multi-channel leverages multiple CPU threads for faster file transfers. So I tried adjusting the number of cores in my Extreme Edition machine down to two to see if that would slow things down. It actually didn't, but it did help me observe the very high CPU usage on that machine. So the answer then was actually the Core i3, the equivalent that I had tried to create on the other side. So we turned the Extreme Edition back up to four cores, eight threads to be similar to what an enthusiast with a Core i7 would have. Then we swapped out the Core i3 in the Lenovo machine with a 4790K and boom! Just like that, it worked. The proof is in the pudding. SMB multi-channel for under $100 can improve your network transfer speeds. And this is great for editing HD or 4K video files over a NAS, uh, for improving the ability of a single file server to serve multiple clients, or even just making impatient people who hate waiting for access to network resources happier. And the more CPU threads you have, with a Core i7 being ideal on both sides of the transfer, the faster it can go. I do wish at this point in the video that I could explain some of the inconsistencies that I observed in getting SMB multi-channel to work at all, but maybe that's an investigation for another day. For now, that's the hardware you need, and that's the results that you can achieve. Which leads us pretty well into our sponsor, Honor, who has us showing off the 5X smartphone today. And there's a few things about it that are notable. First of which is the metal body, the design for which was inspired by the famous Guggenheim Museum in Spain. So the phone is actually made with four metal finishing processes, making the diamond polished aircraft aluminum body actually surprisingly strong. They've got a ton of color options, sunset gold, dark gray, and daybreak silver as well as a fingerprint sensor built into the back that actually works surprisingly quickly and can be tapped in order to take photos or selfies. You can actually set up different fingers, middle pointer and pinky as shortcuts to open different apps. Like maybe you could use your pinky to open up your contacts, your middle to, you know, open up contacts you don't like, and uh, your index to open up Instagram or whatever else. It's powered by Android 5.1 Lollipop with 16 gigs of internal memory and two gigs of RAM, as well as a Qualcomm 64 4-bit octa-core processor in order to deliver actually a surprisingly smooth experience given the price point, but we'll get to that after. It's got a 5.5 inch 1080p display as well as a 13 megapixel rear camera and multiple card slots in order for you to add additional storage as well as two SIM cards. Which leads us again to the price. It comes in at 199 US dollars. That is just the normal everyday price. And you can check that out at the link in the video description. So thanks for watching guys. If this video sucked, you know what to do. But if it was awesome, share it. This is really cool, right? Get subscribed, hit that like button, or even consider supporting us directly by using our affiliate code to shop at Amazon. Instructions for which are up there. Buying a cool shirt like this one or with a direct monthly contribution through our community forum, which by the way is pretty cool. You should check it out. Link in the video description. Now that you're done doing all that stuff, you're probably wondering what to watch next. So click that little button in the top right corner to check out our follow-up to the 7Gamers1CPU video where we all actually game on it. Very cool stuff.